Welcome to this channel, which is a class on research methods by Dr. Lydia Wabugo. This is a class where we discuss everything social science research, from understanding the research discipline, research philosophy, the elements of scientific research, and the methodologies of conducting research. Feel free to ask any question regarding today's lesson on the comment section. Welcome. Welcome to our lesson today. Today we are going to discuss qualitative research designs. In lesson 15, we have discussed qualitative research in details. We have enumerated the characteristics of quantitative research. We have identified when we conduct qualitative research methods of determining trustworthiness of qualitative research, the concept of triangulation, and the steps followed when conducting qualitative research. Today, we are going to discuss qualitative research design. And like we said, when we were discussing quantitative research designs, some researchers also call them approaches. So we may talk about qualitative research approaches or qualitative research designs. This means the designs that help a researcher to collect narrative data from a phenomena when it is in its natural setting so that he or she can describe that phenomena in depth. We have one learning outcome today and it is to discuss the five approaches or the five designs in qualitative research. We have one learning outcome today and it is to discuss the five approaches in qualitative research. The five not arranged in any order are case study, ethnography, grounded theory, phenomenology, biography, or narrative research. So we are going to look at each of these designs or approaches in details. And we start with case study. Case study constitutes a research approach where singular entities are discussed or explained in depth. So this is an extensive investigation. It could be one person, it can be one group or an event. Why is it called a case study? because the focus is a particular unit and that is the unit which we call a case. Therefore, a case study can be defined as a method of studying social phenomena through thorough analysis of an individual case where the case may be an individual, it may be a group, Maybe an episode, maybe a process, maybe a community, maybe a society, or any other unit of social life. The strength of case study is that it can use multiple methods of data collection, multiple data sources to explore the case. And therefore, a case study can achieve a rich description of a phenomenon. Case studies allows an investigator to retain the holistic and meaningful characteristics of real life events regarding the case under study. The other design is ethnography. Ethno means people or folk, while graphy refers to describing something. And the origin of ethnography is in cultural anthropology. So what is ethnography? Ethnography means describing the culture and social interactions of a particular group or subgroup and understanding a way of life of a people from a view of its participants. So 
ethnography as a design describes people's culture and tries to understand another way of life from the native point of view. In an ethnography, the researcher studies the behavior of a cultural group in their natural setting. And for the researcher to be able to do this, they must become insiders and spend a prolonged period of time by collecting primarily observational data. So in ethnography, the key question that we want to address is what are the cultural patterns and perspectives of this group in its natural setting? We have said that observation and more so participant observation is the favored method of data collection in ethnographic research. The other design is grounded theory. Some of us confuse this design and explain it as a design that is grounded on theory. Far from it. Grounded theory explicitly addresses the question of how to generate theory in research. So grounded theory is theory developed or grounded on data. So in this design, researchers tend to generate a theory that is grounded in data from participants who have experienced the process. It is also said that grounded theory is a qualitative research method that uses a systematic set of procedures to develop inductively derived theory about a phenomenon. So in other words, we are saying theories are not generated before a study begins, but they are formed inductively from the data that is collected during the study in itself. The researcher starts with the data, they collect data, and then they develop theory through forming the themes or where they try and form patterns after analysis. So please note that the purpose of grounded theory is to build a theory that is faithful to the evidence. And faithful to the evidence means grounded in the data that we have collected. Then we have phenomenology. Phenomenology describes and understands the essence of lived experiences of individual. That means phenomenology studies lived experiences, people who have experienced a particular phenomena. The key question that we ask in phenomenology is, what is the experience of an activity or concept from the particular participant's perspective? So in this design, the researcher hopes to gain insight into the world of his or participant and to describe their perceptions or reactions to a particular issue. So in phenomenology, the main data collection method is in-depth interviews. So in phenomenological research, the researcher identify the essence of human experiences concerning a phenomenon as described by participants in the study. So we'll give an example to explain this design. So we have said phenomenology deals with lived experiences of a participant, meaning it is an experience that is not experienced by everyone. So this particular participant has gone through an experience, may a good one or a bad one, but it is not an experience which is experienced by each and every participant. For instance, a parent who lives with an autistic child may have gone through experiences that those who do not have autistic or special children cannot explain. 
So if you want to study the experiences of a parent who lives with an autistic child, this may call for a phenomenological study because they are able to share their experiences from their point of view. Any other parent who has no autistic child may only give theoretical data or their understanding of living with a disabled child. Finally, we have biography or narrative research. Biography is the study of life experiences of an individual as told to the researcher or found in documents and archival material of this individual. It is also defined as a form of inquiry in which the researcher studies the lives of individuals and asks one or more individuals who may be known to this particular person to provide stories about their lives and then this information is retold by the researcher into a narrative chronology. Is there a difference between biography and autobiography? Yes, there is. While an autobiography and biography tell the story of someone's life, autobiography is when a person writes his or her own life story. That is called an autobiography. But when another person writes a story about another person's life, then that is called biography. As we conclude this lesson, we need to remind ourselves three things about qualitative research design. That in qualitative design, Data collection and data analysis goes hand in hand. The data you collect must be analyzed so that you do not lose the meaning. Number two, hypotheses may be generated before going to the field, but they are not definite. They may change during data collection and you find yourself formulating or generating new ones. The third one is that data is collected using three main methods. And the three main methods are direct observation, in-depth interview, and focus group discussion. And with that, we have come to the end of today's lesson. Today, we have discussed the five giants of qualitative research. We have also said that we may call them designs and we may also call them approaches and the reason is because they help us to collect narrative data the five that we have discussed are case study which describes a case in depth ethnography which is the study of a people's culture grounded theory which is the study which generates theory grounded on data that has been collected, phenomenology, which studies lived experiences of particular participants, and finally, biography, which studies the life of an individual as told by the researcher. In our next lesson, we are going to discuss mixed methods research. I am sure you do not want to miss the lesson. I want to appreciate you for being part of this lesson today. Feel free to comment by asking any question, like and share this video with your friends. Please subscribe to this channel for you to attend more lessons like we had today. Until we, the next lesson where we discuss mixed method research, thank you and bye for now.